Right, so so much stuff is happening at the present time. It's almost so difficult to keep a track of. But I just wanted to cover this and give a play-by-play -play analysis of Ralph versus Josh on Dick's show that only gets 100 viewers. Absolutely crazy shenanigans have been happening. The truth is forever out there, and personally I feel vindicated because their own words damn them. At the moment, in real time, Dick Masterson is screenshotting random posts from Kiwi Farms, regurgitating them onto his Twitter, getting in a tism about them. It's almost Chris Chant here. What we're seeing is a 45-year-old Mexican Jew just losing his temper at random posters on Kiwi Farms. And you have to ask why. Why is he doing this? What does he want done about this? We'll also go into why this is even taking place on Dick Masterson's show. We'll get into the... I thought this was kayfabe drama between Ethan Ralph and Josh, because Josh makes a comment on his stream a day or so ago where he says that Ralph needs to be sacrificed to the rain god so the corn will grow this year. Fairly innocuous stuff. It's not Josh outright going at Ralph, but Ralph in his drunken, misdrewed state has taken it as such. And what we see right? It's something that I thought was kayfabe, something that I thought wasn't real. Fake drama as well. I just missed this out before I went in and listened to the clip. But what we see is, well, let's just get into this. Let's just play the clip. Let's just get into this because this has activated on? my own. What has united these autistic forces across three fronts to fight in the a war to, uh, we're going all the way up to the White House. All because of my oh. cock. My cock. Funny, right? Funny Dick Masterson. Really, really funny professional comedian there living in his Barbie doll mansion. The homecoming queen, ladies and gentlemen. The homecoming queen. Ock has jump-started a, a thousand spurgs, has launched a thousand spurgs that has... <sighs> Again, the gaslighting of history. It's not Dick Masterson's sexual proclivities that have kick-started this. It's the fact that he runs a scam site called New Project 2 where he harvests your social security number and has leverage over people in powerful positions so he can troll shield himself. That's the real issue here. That's the reason why everyone's in a tism, Dick Masterson. It's not because, you know, you, you try to sleep with a 35-year-old married woman. It's just not the case. So stop gaslighting everyone. But it's not going to stop the gaslighting. Be in no doubt, ladies and gentlemen. Just think of where we've come, you know. We had the we had the text messages. That seems like a year ago now. We had uh, them come in and, and start the text message thing. And then we had a couple weeks of, you know, autism with... What is going on? What has united these autistic forces? All right, forces the clip has started again for some reason, but we're going to persevere. Uh, we're going all the way up to the White House. All because of my oh. cock. My cock has jump-started a, a thousand spurgs, has launched a thousand spurgs that has... What, just think of where we've come, you know. We had, the, we had the text messages. That seems like a year ago now. We had uh, them come in and, and start the text... It seems like a year ago because Dr Ralph is in such a drunk and intoxicated state that the days... Merge into weeks, merge into years. The man has no sense of time anymore. He's that intoxicated. He's that much of an alcoholic that he's transcended time. He's transcended the bounds that constrict us mere mortals. He's transcended time itself. Message thing, and then we had a couple weeks of, you know, autism with Fraudwinson and Ashley there. Fraudwinson. Fraudwinson. How he says, the temerity with which he says Fraudwinson. Ralph, I have a clean bill of health. I have a clean criminal record. You know, I've never been in trouble with the law in my life. I can get a job anywhere I like. This is coming from somebody, this is Ralph, right, who went to prison, let's not forget, for attacking a female police officer, has a criminal record as long as my arm, littered with felonies, littered with driving under the influence convictions and fines. Yet he has the temerity to call me Fraudwinson. This is a man who scammed his fans for four grand for something that never happened, who was constantly, almost always looking for the next scam for which to milk his pay piggies. But I'm Fraudwinson. Let's just carry on. We're not even 30 seconds in. We're not even 30 seconds in. Uh, and then it rolled right into Keemstar versus Ethan <laughs> Klein, which then, bizarrely, <laughs> rolled into... The Maddox reveal, which I did not see coming uh, on Friday, I have to say. No, you didn't see the Maddox reveal coming because you kept saying it was Ian Miles Chung or various other apparent A-logs of yourself, you know? The fact that it might even be Maddox 
is irrelevant at this point because you've thrown the dart at every other face on the scene. That I mean, the fact that this prediction might be correct is irrelevant. It's just irrelevant. And let's let's just clap for Maddox because Dick Masterson has become Maddox. He's become Mad Cux. More so than Maddox ever was. More so than Maddox ever stooped to. Dick Masterson, he's scraped the bottom of the barrel. He's moved on to another barrel. There is no level to which they won't stoop to smear Maddox's good name, all the while smearing themselves in their own excrement to try and lure, try and lure people out to attack Maddox, to attack Mundane Matt, to attack Kraut, or any of the other low-hanging fruit, Coach Red Pill, you know? These people have no shame. They have no shame, and their words will damn them, as we shall see. Man, I felt like an asshole saying it. I just felt, I just felt like I was being paranoid and crazy, but it is just so obvious. I, and it was crazy the number of people who listened to the show, the biggest problem, who knew it instantly. They're like, yeah, I've listened to hundreds of hours of that guy talk. I know him, yeah. pitch shifted mm -hmm. or not. Yep. Uh, all he had to do was calm down and speak clearly. You know? Just or just the Dick Masterson is telling people to calm down and speak clearly. The irony here. The self-awareness not at play in that little clip there. Dick Masterson, a man who goes instantly red and starts screaming down a microphone the moment somebody challenges the fact that he doesn't live in a Barbie doll mansion. The moment somebody says that he peaked with a Dr. Phil commercial. A Pizza Hut commercial and an appearance on Dr. Phil. We might as well combine them at this point because that's how relevant they are. This all happened 13, 15 years ago. The apex of the man's fame and glory. The temerity with which these people speak. Change your, throw your voice a little bit. I mean, I guess for, he, uh, he thought he was in the clear, you know what I mean? Uh, the there are four so many words to avoid this. Four little words, <laughs> <Yeah>. supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh, it's so funny. Dick Masterson is hilarious. The professional comedian at play here on his own show. The Hollywood comedian, ladies and gentlemen. Matt. Man, uh, it's supposedly. Yeah. It's you just fuck up the same words all the time. Yeah. All the fucking time. Remember, had written it out. Louder is funny. Louder is you know, funny. For all intensive purposes, Dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt, Matt, um, Matt. Oh God, Josh is there. Do you want to talk to uh, Nulls there? Do you want? Right. So Josh appears on the stream. Uh, and we're going to see why, we're going to get into why Josh has appeared on this stream, why Dick Masterson is mediating between Ethan Ralph and Josh. Uh, and it's very interesting. It's very interesting indeed. Talk sure, to bring him on if you want. All right. No, no, no. No, are you there? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, no, you no, motherfucker. Fucker, he sounds fine. His he audio sounds, sounds fine. fine but... Yeah, your, your audio is fucked on Discord, but it's whatever. I cranked up to 200%, so it's fine. Whatever. Oh, this is horrible. That's 100 more, isn't it? This is horrible for me. Yeah. Um, is the YouTube dying audio in real fun? time. Is the YouTube I'm audio dying fun? in real time, yeah. They said uh, YouTube sounds okay. Okay. Right. So, this is great content, by the way, from a professional podcaster. Somebody who prides himself and draws a paycheck from this podcast alone, right? This is what he's making his name off of. And he's running the podcast through Discord. And they have no quality assurance on the voices calling in. They spend a minute just talking about how the audio levels are shit, talking about how the microphones just aren't working, haven't been calibrated correctly by Sean the Sheep there. It's appalling. It's appalling. This is This We Connect a tier podcasting. In fact, we do it better. Can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe this? Same. It's getting it from the same source. No, no. What is, what is happening? What is happening to us? <laughs> what is happening to our alliance? Look, what is happening to us? What is happening to our alliance? Their own words damn them. Their own words damn them. This is the equivalent of Masterson calling Josh into the office for a performance review at work. Let's let's have the conversation, Josh. Let's have the conversation where we uh, we dock a few points from your salary there. We take a few sick sick days off. We take a few of your holiday days away. This is what we're in at the moment. We're in a boardroom meeting behind the scenes at New Project 2. We're being torn asunder. 
Everyone's going insane because they're all cooped up. I've been practicing for my entire life, so I'm unaffected. But everyone yeah. else is, is horribly degraded. But uh -huh. Everybody else has lost their minds because they're pointing out the hypocrisy. They're pointing out threads being locked. They're pointing out collusion and scamming and blatant gaslighting. But everyone else has lost their minds. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? I really think left inside. I think that's true. Um, uh, did you did you say that Ralph was going to be sacrificed? I didn't watch the stream because for some reason I'm not getting notifications of any of your stuff anymore. Oh, listen to that. For some reason I'm not getting any notifications of your stuff anymore. This is Dick Masterson distancing himself from Josh. Just there. He's saying, oh... You know, your stuff's not showing up on my feed. I'm not retweeting you anymore. I'm not I'm not seeing your content anymore. I wonder why. Maybe it's because you're not playing my ball, my, my tune. Maybe it's because you're not singing from the hymn sheet that I'm writing for you, Josh. This is a little wink. This is the wink and nod that Dick Masterson has practiced throughout his so-called career, where he's managed to reach the top of this totem pole where he is the godfather and these are the, his capos. He's paying all of these people from New Project 2. And the way that he nudges and winks them along and gets them to do his bidding is by saying stuff that's Sargon-esque in its ability to say nothing but to say everything at the same time. I don't know oh, why. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's intentional or if I'm just a retard. Both are equally plausible when it comes to, to YouTube. But, yeah, um... No, I made a reference to... Uh, I've been making a reference to the South Park episode. There's that episode where Britney Spears is, is basically photographed to death. Yeah. Like, she tries to blow her brains out, and they yeah. bring her back. Just the walk down from Josh here. Josh blatantly said, we need to sacrifice Josh to the rain gods so that the corn will grow. Right? And he said that with... I mean, he even follows it up by saying, you know, he's not being ironic. This needs to happen. Someone needs to be thrown to the wolves to appease the horde that's not just coming after me, but coming after Dick Masterson and New Project 2 altogether. But now it's a, an elaborate meta South Park joke that nobody got. Unbelievable. And they keep photographing her. Right. And yeah. the, the joke is that they have to sacrifice her for the harvest. I'm yeah. Like, well, if we have to sacrifice Ralph for the corn, you know, whatever... <laughs> That's just gonna be it. <laughs> I think it's this, Matt, Matt. this really pissy fucking DM, like you, you sir, will be sacrificed long before me. <laughs> Matt, like, uh... Matt. Yeah, this is right. So, <clears throat> in the wake of Josh saying that Ralph needs to be sacrificed to the rain god so that the corn will grow, Ralph loses everything, gets in a drunken stupor, leaks DMs with, um, uh, well. Well, Josh leaks the DMs, right? But has sent DMs to Josh where he's saying, you know, you're going to be sacrificed long before me. You know, you're a coward because Godwinson and PPP have, you know, been rallying your own forum against you. But that's just not the case. That's just not the case. Because, I mean, <clears throat> we have such a marginal influence compared to all of the other people out there. The simple fact that we're speaking the truth and that the truth is out there and the truth is reaching people's ears, right-thinking people's ears and they're making their own sound decisions is something they don't understand because they gaslight their audiences. They tell them lies. They tell them an agenda to think. They tell them a mindset to get involved in. And that's what they do. That's what they do. So they can't understand that it's not just two people out there. You know, uh, I mean, if you were to believe Ethan Ralph, myself and PPP not only have rallied Kiwi Farms against Josh, but we're also posting on Kiwi Farms with several alt accounts. We're also sending people from our own discords, which we don't have. You know, this discord server, which we do not have. We're also sending thousands and thousands of people to Kiwi Farms to run Defence Force for PPP, to say PPP won, to, you know, uh, tell the truth. Absolutely crazy, crazy behaviour. They can't believe that because, I mean, that's what they do. Ralph sends his gun guard onto Kiwi Farms to run Defence Force. So he can't believe that other people don't do it. It's projection in its purest form. That's exactly true. By the way, first off, he makes this, uh, Matt, he makes Matt. this uh, analogy uh, on his show. Matt. And he goes, I'm not joking. This is not a joke. I'm dead serious. Matt, Ralph Matt. needs to be sacrificed oh. so, uh, we can, so I can stop being picked on by my own board uh, every single Matt, day. Matt. And they can stop calling me a child molester Matt. again every single yeah. day. So this is, this is an interesting thing here. Look at how Ralph instantaneously 
brings up the child molestation accusations against Josh. He himself doesn't get his hands dirty by accusing Josh of being a pedophile, but he brings up the accusations anyway. It's a tactic that's Sargon-esque, but it's a tactic that, you know, is disingenuous to the extreme, right? Because we all know that, I mean, Ralph will walk down from this towards the end of this clip, but we all know that Ralph knows the full history of Blockland and Josh and all of the other stuff that Josh has been involved in. We all know he has the full history of that because people have fed this to him. And we all know that Ralph keeps dirt on people he associates with. Vast memory banks are stored in the Ralph archive of just all of this stuff. And he knows the most damaging thing he could possibly bring up is the child molestation accusations. But he doesn't say it. He doesn't say it because he's learned from Sargon that way. He's learned from the very best on how to say something but not say it. On how to bring something up into the ether and leave it there but not directly get his hands dirty by doing that. It's shameful behaviour, and, and, and instantaneously as well, Josh will call him up on it, because this is a tactic that is so transparent, so blatant, and we know that Ralph isn't kidding here. Ralph just wants... Ralph maybe wants blood, but Ralph certainly wants Josh to bow to his tune, and we'll see why. So he's trying to turn the heat back on me, then he goes like a woman uh, and leaks the DMs oh, to his Discord, because that's the kind of dude he is. Uh, so, you know, I mean... That's Josh for you. I don't know what to say. No, uh, no. Very, very eloquent. Being called a child molester by my own board, so you don't have to accuse me of being a child molester, but you can throw it out no, there I mean, without the eating it. Not me. Yeah, exactly. And this is truth from Josh. This is actual truth from Josh. He can throw out this accusation out there without actually saying it. And the thing is, if Ethan Ralph had such a problem with Josh being a child molesting pedophile, why has he had him on his show all those many times? Why has he done this? Why has he colluded with Josh so many times? If he's got such a problem with Josh being a child molesting pedo. Very strange, isn't it? But it's almost as though if the, if the relationship and partnership is beneficial to Ralph, he will forgive anything that's out there. He doesn't care if you're a child molester, or a murderer, or a rapist. No, it's, it's fine. But until you snake on Ralph, until you say something that's out of line, because this is what Josh has done. He's just said... You know, a phrase which has been misconstrued as being out of line, out of step with what Ralph expects from Josh. Then Ralph will stake on you. Ralph will publicly bring this stuff up uh, 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 in the most incredulous way possible. It's crazy. That, I, don't know. I think Somehow. that's what a woman does. A man <laughs> Very eloquent. Being called a child molester by my own board, so you don't have to accuse me of being a child molester, but you can throw it out well, there I mean, without the eating it. That, not me, that, I, don't know. I think Somehow. that's what a woman does. Your own, board, your own people said that, Josh. I didn't say that. Many people are saying... It's just unlistenable, because you have to filter out the Sean the Sheep noises and Dick Masterson fake laughing because he thinks this is a comedy podcast, because he thinks he's a professional comedian. He just can't let these two people have their beef without slathering the meh, meh, and the louder is funny laughter. But I'm not one of those. Is this for real? Many <laughs> fucking weirdos so. joining from your, your circles, yes. Are <laughs> circles. Repeating... Is that right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. I mean, even Josh realizes that the Gunt Guard has joined the forum in mass in order to go at Josh, right? In order to defend Ethan Ralph. Even Josh realizes this. And, par and, and Ralph is parroting what he's told the Gunt God to say. You know, so he, he hasn't directly said that Josh is a pedo child molester, but the Gunt God have. And therefore he can recite the Gunt God's actions without actually saying that Josh is a pedo. Crazy behaviour. Hey, you guys are both on the side of hate here. I didn't, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about <laughs> yeah, these <laughs> child molester yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is just there is way too much accusations of people being child. There's more accusations of people being child molesters than I think there are people in the world. Oh, yeah, if it right. was, according to the internet, it seems to be the go-to. Yeah. But, yeah. Let me ask, days. why did you share the DMs like a woman though? Oh what no. So Ralph is just so incredibly pissed that. Josh has shared these DMs. As though this is a high crime? As though Josh should be called up in The Hague for sharing some DMs between him and an alcoholic who can't watch his mouth? You know, uh, this is the highest crime 
that Ralph could have committed, right? That that Josh could have committed, that Ralph perceives Josh as committing, leaking DMs. You sent me you sent me messages and I'll just read them verbatim whatever. <laughs> oh. I posted them in my Discord because you sent them to me and they were funny. That's why I posted them. By the way, let me say this before you read them. I sent the same exact tweets out in public except for the yes. part where I said Kiwi Farms was being mocked. That was the only part I left out. Yeah, because he didn't want that out in the public. He didn't want to slight Kiwi Farms to be in the public. Absolutely Absolutely shameless behavior from Ralph because he realizes if he mentions his butt hurt at Kiwi Farms, then that will rise organic response to that. So that's why Ralph is annoyed. Because in private, in these DMs to Josh, he's whining and bitching about his thread. He's whining and bitching about how Josh should clean up Ralph's thread and make sure that it's sanitized and kept in check and moderated to the nth degree. That's what he expects of Josh. But he doesn't want that side of it in public. He's happy with everything else being in the public, being in the open. But he doesn't want the fact that he's trying to tell Josh how to run his forum to be in the open. Yes, that's why I posted them. Let me say this. I said that... I sent the DMs first, and then I put the tweets out. Uh, and it's still, a, it's still a fucking womanly to share DMs regardless. That's a bitch thing. Obviously, I tried to... Some heat. I mean, are we in a different, bizarro Twilight Zone universe where Ralph has never shared anyone's private DMs? I'm pretty sure if you read through his own Twitter feed, you'll see all of these private DMs that he shared between himself and other people that wanted those DMs to be kept in confidence. I'm pretty sure if you listen to even like a minute of the kill stream, you'll he hear him, Bibble and Flamingo, and Gator as well, picking over some private DMs that are being shared as an exclusive live on air. The hypocrisy at play. That's not true. That's not true. I have... Let, that's not true. It's not true. I've shared them on occasion when they're called for. When Sargon tried to say I lied about the setup, I shared those DMs. That's a different story. Yeah, he, so he shared, <laughs> he shared DMs from himself and a fake Sargon. You know, and let's just get into that just for a moment. Ralph has spent the entire day today waiting in a live stream for Sargon to show up. When Sargon is publicly said... That Ralph hasn't got in touch with him. He's not contacted his team. He's not contacted his secretary or any other V associate that Sargon keeps around. Ralph is lying, in fact, Sargon's words were. Ralph is lying for relevance. He He's using my name in order to gain more relevance. He's lying about me going on to a show. So he, he was in commune with the fake Sargon. And the fake Sargon, we went through those DMs, the fake Sargon didn't even commit to going on Ralph's show. It was a half assed committal at best. It was a maybe, possibly, perhaps sometime in the future. It wasn't a set date that he absolutely agreed to, full stop. But but Ralph is just doubling down on the fact that this fake Sargon was the real Sargon. Absolutely crazy. And he managed to get Mark Collett uh, to sit with him and, and wait in the in, in on the kill stream for Sargon to arrive. How desperate do you have to be to wait for Sargon? To wait for Sargon, who you know will not arrive because you've been communing with a fake Sargon set up by Zoom and Capos, the plate gang. You've been waiting for that fake Sargon to arrive. How desperate do you have to be for relevance? Maybe there is some truth in what Sargon says. For once. Maybe he has got the measure of Ralph just this one time where he says that Ralph is so desperate for attention from the stepfather that he's willing to stoop to such lengths. Or if somebody's giving me permission to share, yeah, I have. You can't show another situation otherwise. Listen, I saw your Spurgs on Kiwi Farm trying to pick up shit. That's not accurate, so. I, I hope I... <laughs> what is going on? What is you... <clears throat> Notice how whenever Ralph is actually confronted with fact and truth, he will say it's not fact. He will say it's not true. He will, de he will deny reality in that moment. The fact is, I mean, Ralph has doxed his own Paypig supporters. He's doxed people who actually were fans of him. He's, you know, he himself has shared DMs without permission. He himself has committed that high cr crime. 
he himself has committed treason and should be hanged from the rafters. But when he's confronted with evidence that he has done this, by many people, by many sources, it's not true. It never happens. It's done. I lied about the setup. I shared those DMs. That's a different story. Or if somebody's giving me permission to share, yeah, I have. You can't show another situation otherwise. Listen, I saw your spurks on Kiwi Farms trying to pick up shit. That's not accurate, so... I, I hope I wouldn't you said share the same thing in public, which is why I posted them. Because I thought it was funny that you said it on in Twitter, and then you also DM them directly to me. That's Aww. why it was funny. I do agree that sharing no, DMs is a bitch move. Yeah. Matt. Yeah. I, I unless you really are pushed to it, public, you know, which is yeah. Whatever. I don't know. Actually, it's not. I just told you there was a difference between the statements. Okay. Why did you share them? What's the point in sharing them other than to throw hate off yourself? Well, the point in sharing them, Ralph, is to show that there's two faces to you and it's to show that, you know, you're presenting an image of yourself where you're not butthurt at the Kiwi Farms for mocking you and telling the truth about you. And the point is, Ralph, sharing these DMs is probably the most uh, re redemptive move that Josh has made in the past few weeks. Finally, he's, you know, finally entering into a redemption arc of sorts, right? He's finally sticking to the morals and principles and ideals that he had prior to his association, not with, just with you, but with Dick Masterson and New Project too. This is a step in the right direction. And you know it's a step in the right direction, Ralph, which is why you're smirking out so, so hard in this interaction. I have no heat on myself. The people well, who yeah. are angry are settled down. If they're angry, I'm oh, not feeling they? it. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. You realize that that board you're talking about is like maybe 5 to 10% of traffic. I could delete it right now, and it wouldn't affect me. Well, go delete it then. Go, go delete it then. Ralph wants Josh to delete his Kiwi Farms thread. This is what the whole thing is. This is what underlines all of their interactions. This is what Ralph wants uh, Josh to do in every single interaction he's ever had with Josh. Any favour that Ralph has ever given Josh, if there even is one, if there's a single one, he thinks that... In return for that, Josh needs to delete that thread on Kiwi Farms. Just go delete it then. No, no, his words. His words. No. Well, I'm sure you would want to. <laughs> that would have some, some positive implications for you. And that's right. Josh is right. Josh recognizes game. Like, Josh recognizes, you know, and props to Josh for this. Josh realizes and recognizes that half of the interactions that he has with these e-celebs is purely down to the fact that they just want him to delete that thread. So that's why they'll cozy up to him. That's why they'll, you know, uh, try and be pally and pally with Josh. So he realizes that. And the fact, <laughs> the fact is that even though he realizes that, he's not going to bow to their demands. He's still going to be Josh regardless. He's still going to keep up, you know, thousand page threads containing every dox of not just you, but your family members and, you know, where you went to school and, you know, the names of your pets. He's still going to allow that to stay up. And there's nothing you can do to change that. And, and that's still the most base thing about Josh. Because he plays the game and he plays it correctly, I suppose. I mean, if you want to be, a, <laughs> if you want to play this horrible, twisted, sordid game, then it helps to have a board. It helps to have a forum where you have so much leverage over the e-celebs that you interact with. Uh, Not really. I mean, I made a thousand dollars last week. I'm doing pretty good. You know? <laughs> yeah, I made a thousand dollars last week. Ah, you know, and I spent half of it on Maker's Mark, and I spent the rest of it on prescription medication. <laughs> you know, Ralph doesn't save money. Ralph has no sort of financial responsibility in his life where he has to be held accountable for his actions. He lives with his own mother, you know. <laughs> but, and, and Josh will mention this. Josh will say that you stoop to that defence every single time you're called out on any of your actions. Oh, you made, you made X amount of money in the past week. You've got X amount of live viewers this week. They're not all bots, you know? And half of that money won't bounce just in general because the pay pigs that have donated Super Chats to you or whatever lemons or whatever um, fake currency you're, you're harvesting money from won't just bounce by the time they reach your bank account. You know, let's just carry on. Why do you always do that? It's so gross. Like, whenever people... I don't care about you your approval, go... Josh. I think sharing Lollicon on the internet and making a big stand about, you know, spreading uh, child pornography-like <laughs> materials is pretty gross. Yeah, so he thinks that's pretty gross, right? But he's still platformed Josh so many times now. 
you know, he's still happy for Josh, for Josh to do favours for him, you know, he's still happy to associate with Josh as long as Josh is on side. He can forgive all of the all of the stuff that he knows about Josh apparently, and he's he's perfectly willing to throw in Josh's face the moment they have a slight fracas, the moment they have a slight disagreement. All of this stuff gets thrown in your face. Like he's outright calling Josh a pedophile. One of the worst things you can call another man, and he's just outright throwing this up because Josh has said one phrase, one innocuous phrase. Let's be honest, that he's misconstrued in his drunken state as being egregious, as being akin to treason, as being akin to something that would get somebody hanged in the real world. Ethan Ralph, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I think you're pretty gross. You have if you want to know the truth about. I have a mentally handicapped alcoholic slurring child pornographer at me on yeah. the live stream. <clears throat> mentally uh, handicapped. It covers like a... <laughs> Ralph is... Ralph... <laughs> the only thing Ralph questions there is the mentally handicapped part, not the alcoholic slurring part. <laughs> mentally handicapped. Well, yes, Ralph, you are mentally handicapped. You've, you've drank enough beer and, and alcohol at this point that it's taken a toll on the IQ that you used to maybe have. And the brain cells that used to maybe keep you going coherently, somewhat, uh, on the internet. You are, you are mentally handicapped, and the alcohol's done this to you. Maybe it was your genes prior, who knows. But definitely the alcohol has played a part. So Josh is 100% correct here. You know? but, but the incredulity with which he says, mentally handicapped? <laughs> you know? A lot yes. of, you know... <laughs> A lot of well, I mean, your whole entire family disowned you. Mine didn't disown me. So oh, I don't your family is dead because they drank oh, themselves to oh, death. Oh like no! no. no. Matt, oh, Matt, Matt, yeah. Matt, 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 Matt. You live in the United Matt. States Matt. because you're on the run from the federal government. Look at how, by the way, Ralph uses all of the talking points and attacks that Zoom would have used had Zoom been in this interaction with Josh on Dick Masterson. You know, I've watched a few of Zoom streams and he, he levels all of this stuff at Josh, you know, but we're supposed to think, right, that, you know, if you listen to Ralph, Zoom's a liar and you're not supposed to trust any source, any anything that Zoom says is to be disregarded out of hand immediately. Yet, what talking points, what source does he actually use without saying it when he talks to Josh face to face? Well, he brings up Blockland instantly, and he brings up Josh's past with his family. You know, stuff that Zoom talks about regularly. <laughs> you know? What, what a disaster, ladies and gentlemen. What a disaster. But, you know, Zoom's a pedo liar. You know, you shouldn't trust anything that man says. Yet the first thing that Ralph will do when attacking Josh is to use all of Zoom's talking points, is to use all of Zoom's research. Oh, no, I'm not. I mean, that's pretty Produce cool. The warrant. I live overseas because Come it's cheap. Then. Come back then. You know what I thought you... Uh, let's just question that. Press one if you think Josh is living overseas because it's cheap. Press two if you think that Josh is an international fugitive hiding from the law. I'm seeing quite a great many twos. So many twos. You guys are just joking I probably around. will. I did not know no, this was going, going to. I did not know this was going to go like this. I think like you knew this. exactly. No, what I was really gonna... didn't, Josh. I, I, you know, I love you. You know, I'm just busting balls with Kiwi Farms. No, I... no, he's not just busting balls. This is Dick Masterson saying, "I, you know, I love you, Josh. Please troll shield me, Josh. Please moderate my thread and lock my thread again. You know, you know, I love you, Josh. I'm just busting balls on Kiwi Farms. Press one if you think that Dick Masterson screenshotting every negative post on Kiwi Farms and putting it onto his Twitter and posting a rage tweet above it is just him busting balls on Josh and Kiwi Farms. Or press two if you think that Dick Matterson is genuinely butthurt. He wants Josh to clean it up. He wants Josh to earn his paycheck this month. And he expects cleaning up. He expects sweeping from Josh. Press two if you think that. I'm seeing so many twos. Thousands of twos. Hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands and millions and millions of twos are streaming in. Because we've identified that Dick Masterson isn't busting balls. Dick Masterson is saying words here in order to try and mediate, in order to try and get his two employees here, Ethan Ralph and Josh, to the table. Because if he does, if they don't agree or come to a compromise, then Dick Masterson might have to take sides and terminate one of the one of the one of the merchants that he keeps close to his bosom and we'll get into why 
as we progress through the recording. We're only seven minutes, 30 seconds into the recording, ladies and gentlemen. Only seven minutes, 30 seconds, and there's so, so, so much to unpack and analyze. I knew that he would be really aggressive, because he's like, I'll be on the, the dick show tomorrow. Where are you going to be? I'm like, okay. Well, I'll show up at a reasonable time. Matt, Matt. Ralph, look, stop interrupting. <laughs> Matt, Matt, <laughs> my whole point Matt, is, Matt, my whole Matt. point is, Josh is a punk bitch, and I'll say that in public. Oh, oh, oh. The end. Like, a, like a fucking whore, and uh, yeah, I'll say that in public. Well, so, uh, it's whatever. Ha having recently gone... I told him, I already told him in DMs. I'm, I've cut ties with this. Uh, I was about to say a certain word. I won't we don't say have any ties. So, <clears throat> cut ties. Cut ties with Josh. Now, you have to question... In the, in the world of where apparently there's no collusion, there's no associations with these people, these people are far... You know, these people are just uh, individual entities that have their own voice and aren't tied together with, with mutual interests and business ties. Why is, why is Ralph saying he's cut ties with Josh? What ties could there possibly be between him and Josh? Hmm? Now we are starting to realise why they're both on Dick Masterson's show and why this is being officiated by Dick Masterson, the Hollywood celebrity that lives in the Hollywood Hills, the homecoming king, the man who peaked at high school. Now we're starting to see why, and we're starting to see what is essentially a disciplinary meeting at work, in the office, where Dick Masterson has sat on the other side of the desk, and in front of him he's got Ethan Ralph and he's got Josh. And he's either going to bang their heads together, or he's going to have to say goodbye to one of them. Uh, don't say that. <laughs> oh, you mean the ties where you basically built your fucking stream off my stream? When you can't even talk with oh, your same boy. little... So Josh, uh, Ralph thinks that Josh owes everything to him. You know, you know, just as I was saying that whenever you, Ralph does you a favor, or even if he thinks that you've, he's done you a favor, he expects a great deal. He expects allegiance eternally and he expects favors done for him that greatly outweigh the favor he perceives to have done for you. So, I mean, he, he credits Josh's entire presence on the Internet <laughs> you know, down to down to himself. He thinks that Ethan Ralph is responsible. Josh owes him a great debt. Uncle Fry, you sound like it's probably because you were molested no. as a child. That's, oh, what, uh, no, that's what they no. said on the Onision Ralph. stream. When you when you talk like that, it's because you got molested as a child. I think there might be something to that. But... Let's just run through what Ralph has already said here. He's already accused Josh of being a paedophile child molester. He's already said that he's like an international fugitive on the run. That his family hate him and will not speak to him and and, and, and all of this. And now he's saying that because of his own vo because of Josh's voice, because it shakes a bit. Because he sounds so much trepidatious. That that means he was child molested. He himself is a victim of child molestation. This is the this is the world we're living in, right? Proud, honourable samurai Ralph, who didn't do nothing wrong, who lives by a code of honour that none of us none of us can possibly perceive. You know, he's just behaving in a in a great, uh, admirable, chivalrous way here towards somebody who said. You know, not even a sentence worth of slights against him. I don't know. People smarter than me will have to have to uh, examine it. I'm not sure. Theory. I assure you, I am very unmolested. Uh, <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Matt, Matt, no, Matt, please, Matt, uh, Matt, 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 please don't if share. If anything any... happens, it's Matt, not your fault. Please don't share Matt, any DMs Matt. from me. It's just, it's please. like, it's such a weird. Okay, did you hear that? Dick Masterson is pleading there. Please don't share any DMs from me. He's saying that to Josh. He says, quote, please don't share any DMs from me. He's saying that to Josh. Now, hmm, I wonder why Dick Matteson doesn't want any DMs to be shared that he sent to Josh. Could it be that Dick Matteson has been colluding with Josh? Could it be that Dick Masterson has been saying to Josh, you need to lock my thread, you need to do something to earn this $2,000? I think so. I think there's a reason and a deep reason why Dick Masterson is saying publicly on air, seriously, he's not even laughing at that point, with utmost seriousness and sincerity, please do not share my DMs, Josh. I wonder why. 
And this is a this is an order, by the way, with the the inflection of his voice, the way he utters this word, these words, this phrase, is an order. This is an order to an employee to toe the line. The thing they go to is like, yo, you rape children, and also you're a child pornographer, also you were raped because you sound weird. <laughs> and you're a false flagger. <laughs> you're Matt, a false Matt. flagger. You've been uh, flagging yeah. every. Oh God, Everybody's I'm flagging. so sick of that. The fu- Remember, ladies and gentlemen, loud is funny. The louder you are, the most, the more funnier you are. The height of your comedic powers is based purely on the fact that you can go louder and scream down a microphone. The Dick Masterson School of Comedy. False flagging I mean, accusations have got to It's no more preposterous than the charges that are thrown out at me on your site every single fucking day, to be quite honest with you, so. I'm like, what? Um, He's I don't drunk. think anyone's called you a what? child pornographer, Ralph. <sighs> Uh, not that one, no, but the false flagging. They said I used my crippled brother to get a house yesterday. I saw that. Just Truth, truth. He used his crippled brother, Evan Ralph, to get a house. We know this for a fact. And we know that Ralph flags. <laughs> right? We know for a fact that Ralph flags. So it's not false flagging accusations. This is truth. Truth. Truth, ladies and gentlemen. Purest truth. Like shit every I mean, yeah, they, they do. They, there's uh, a couple of a logs on there who are trying to prove. I don't know why that my girlfriend is a cam whore based on shit they have invented. Oh. Like they go through and oh. f- find random people and say that it's her. Uh, it's uh, it's okay. really baffling. It's baffling. It's so baffling. But he doesn't care about it. Dick Matterson doesn't care about it. That's why he's screenshotting the posts from Kiwi Farms and putting them on his Twitter, as though he desperately wants somebody to moderate the Kiwi Farms thread there. You know, <laughs> he doesn't care about it. It's baffling. He doesn't understand why, but clearly he understands what he wants done. He wants the action taken in order to sweep, sweep, sweep. Josh, keep sweeping it up. Please sweep it up harder. Please make that floor sparkling. I can't quite see my face in the floor, Josh. So keep on sweeping. Keep on cleaning. Keep on mopping it up. Isn't there are Ralph's a lot of conspiracy of theories Hor? going on. What, Josh? Or what, no? Isn't a Ralph's new girlfriend a cam whore? <laughs> From D-Live? <laughs> uh, no, actually. My girlfriend's the managing editor of my website now. The managing editor? <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> We've all been to the Ralph Retort site, have we not? It's a blog. It's a blog. Uh, is it a WordPress blog? But it, it's a blog, nonetheless. A managing editor? <laughs> this is what he's saying. This is the pitch he's using to attract women. You know, you can, <laughs> you can, you can join the Ralph Retort. You can, be, you can be my mama, and I'll call you the managing editor of my site because I'm a proper journalist, and you will bow to me. You will lick that gunt clean. I know you're not going to talk about women, Josh, and she uh... said you can't even derive sexual pleasure from intercourse or anything else, and you've watched so much fucked up porn in your life that you can't even get off to a woman's touch. I mean... So Ralph is fully aware of who Josh is. Ralph has seen all of these screenshots. He's listened to all of these audio recordings. He's likely got gigabytes upon gigabytes and gigabytes of dirt against Josh. And he's likely had this from the outset, before he even started interacting with Josh. Yet he's still associated with Josh to such a degree where Josh is frequently on the guy's live streams. He's frequently associating with Josh. Uh, and the fact that, you know, he considers himself as having ties to Josh, you know. Yet, yet, yet Josh is this evil person that he knows all of this stuff about. That he's perfectly willing to throw out into the open publicly on the Dick Masterson show. A show that apparently gets millions and millions and millions of downloads each day, you know. This is what Ralph does if you slightly snake on him. This is what this is what he'll talk about to. Uh, well, this is what he'll bring up to Josh. But imagine what he'd bring up to Flamingo or Gator. Imagine the gigabytes upon gigabytes upon gigabytes of dirt that he has on Gator and Flamingo. We already know that when Rand was crying down his microphone and telling Ralph in strictest confidence about his wife's miscarriage, we all know that the first thought process that Ralph had was to click record. Click record there and record in full Rand breaking down about his wife's miscarriage. That was his first thought. That's a great, great, you know, honourable person there. Ethan Ralph, in fact, of course. 
I, that's those are things you said in public, so I really wouldn't go down the the women hill. I've never said anything there. about watching fucked up porn, but okay. It is difficult oh, but the rest to take of it's a woman's touch. Or... I'll give you that. Mm, okay. I'm not going to talk about my personal life because I'm not a moron. But you wanted to bring mine up, yeah. Okay. Because All you... this is because you got excoriated you know by, by Fraudwinson and Ashley. Fraudwinson again? Like, this man has been to prison. <laughs> you know? This man has a, has a criminal history as long as my arm. This man has got countless fines and, and wrapped up countless interactions with the authorities. Then it's then it's unreasonable to assume that he could just get a job straight off the bat, you know, if the internet were to crash today. I mean, this man can't get a job anywhere, like, proper, anywhere legitimate. Th th <laughs> this guy has a temerity to call me fraud, Winston. You know, that, baff that, that is baffling. That is actually baffling, you know. And you're sad about it. And you're sad that you, you know, you've been getting made fun of by your own board. You try to turn it back on me, and that's fine. I mean, that's you the kind of thing. Sex with like, Miss Elizabeth. Not, not <laughs> work. Guys, guys, was Take there anything? The cage, is gentlemen. there anything we can do to to bring to some togetherness? I understand. Listen to Dick Masterson's words. Is there anything I can do? Well, he's using we because he sees himself as a king, so that's why he refers to himself in the third person now. Is there anything we can do to bring you two together so I don't have to terminate anyone's business partnerships? <laughs> you know, so so we can all get paid and we can all carry on the scam. You know, this is a we are in we are witnessing a disciplinary at work here. We are witnessing Ethan, Ralph, Josh, and Dick Masterson in the office, and Dick Masterson is trying to mediate between the two of them. Stand. No, you've done enough. Oh, I actually I thought I didn't know that there was so much animosity. Um, I, I there wasn't until like two days ago because I said I was going to turn Ralph into corn by sacrificing him to the god. <laughs> 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 there is. There is uh, no, you have to admit. No, there I is have a... the clip. That's not what he said. I have the clip. Okay. He's trying to admit... Now listen to this. So Ran, uh, <laughs> Ralph will bring up this clip that he has at hand, right? And it's the wrong clip, and it's very interesting that the clip he has immediately at hand that he thinks is a smoking gun is actually something completely different. Yet he's still archived it. He's still got it on his computer. He's been mulling over this clip for hours and hours and hours of his life. Let's just listen to what the clip is that Ralph mistakenly brings up is the smoking gun. He did not say that he would turn you into corn. corn. Is turning into whiskey. <sighs> I mean, what, what did I say, Ralph? I, I literally said field. that that we would sacrifice you to the gods to turn you into corn. That seems reasonable. There's the clip. Yeah. Uh, here's the clip. I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that that wasn't Here, I'll, serious. I'll play it if you post the clip in the chat. I sent it. Oh, I sent it in DMs. I'll okay, I can. Too. I can play it from there. Ralph. Okay, here we go. Yeah. This the one's just the audio. Thing. Ralph says, uh, "One thousand viewers all week." And 2K, almost two 1,500 uh, viewer streams. But there's a ton of momentum against me, question mark. Not seeing it, TBH. PPP and Godwinson failed. Huey Fathers openly being mocked, etc. But we shall see. What makes me laugh is right now on YouTube. Is that it? Small so Ralph has just played the wrong clip. He's basically clipped a part of This Week in Nectar. <laughs> you know, that we, uh, myself, PPP, and Leo did a few days ago now. But he's clipped the part where I'm reading aloud the DMs that Ralph is in a tism about. And for some reason, he's archived that. I wonder why he wants to hear my voice dramatically reading those DMs and PPP giving a hot take on what Ralph has done there. I wonder why. I, I wonder why, <laughs> why he's personally clipped that, why he's kept that, and why he thinks that's the smoking gun. You know? He's clearly made an error here. But I just wonder why he would clip that part of This Week in Nectar. And I wonder what other clips he's got of myself, PPP and Leo talking about him. I, w I wonder what he's obsessing over. This seems like a very bizarre thing to obsess over, the fact that I'm dramatically reading these DMs that should not be out there. Uh, the smoking gun evidence. <laughs> Maybe he just likes hearing my voice read aloud his words. Because we've got a track history, myself and Sir Ethan Ralph in producing mellifrous Kino for all of you to enjoy. Ralph, was that it? I don't know if he sent the right... You can hear him furiously typing. <laughs> the, 
the the pig hooves furiously smashing and slamming against the keyboard there as he tries to save face and bring up the correct clip. clip. Yeah, I don't think oh. so. There's furious typing. There's a lot of typing going on. Oh, sorry, I'm playing Space Station 13. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, did Ralph, did, is he still there? <laughs> we have no Ralph. I think he dropped out. He might have uh, muted himself. He might have muted himself, yeah. Oh, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah I had go. myself muted. I, don't think I said the wrong clip. Yeah. I, put it in the, I put it in the chat. Okay, here. I'll try it again. Uh... You know, this is a, this is a this professional is a podcasting episode. show. You know what I mean? Uh, Nimasa says this is the anniversary episode as well. And there's so much dead air and just technical faults. The, these guys have no idea of how to run a professional podcast. We do it better on This Week in Nectar than these guys can possibly even like fathom. And these have got years on us. Years and years and years on us. This is their living. This is their job. This is their job. We do it for free. Yet they have the same level of technical ability as myself and PPP. <laughs> Everybody's mad at everyone. Oh, happy anniversary. Thank you. Know. Thank you. When is the Kiwi Farms anniversary? Completely wrong, I guess. Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. I don't know why it's not playing. Yes. Yeah, Ralph? Uh, but I, there it is. There it is. Uh, PPP won on gaining more fans, I guess. I mean... I so this is the clip of... <clears throat> Josh talk. It's this isn't Josh talking in real time. This is the clip of Josh, you know, saying he wants to sacrifice Ralph to the to the rain gods for the corn harvest to grow. This is what Ralph was in a tism about before he even entered onto this stream. So that's what's playing now. The correct clip has finally emerged. I mean, okay, I, I don't dislike Ralph, but I I do I I'm at a place and I'm not being ironic, where I think it may be time to sacrifice Ralph to the corn. We have to sacrifice Ralph, Ethan Ralph, to the gods so that the corn will be a bountiful harvest this year. Because I think he has, he has so much bad blood with all these people who fucking hate him that it may be the only solution. We have to sacrifice Ethan Ralph for the harvest. You know, so that's a fairly innocuous statement. I mean, you can clearly see that Josh's tongue is firmly within his cheek as he's saying that. Like, he he doesn't literally want Ralph to be, you know, carved up on a rock by some druids. He doesn't want that to happen. But he's saying, you know, if anyone's going to go, it's probably going to be Ralph. He's going to be hoist by his own petard. So we might as well just let him, let him go, let him go. But Ralph has taken this as the ultimate slight to the point where he's going on a show and immediately off the bat he's saying that Josh is a child molesting pedo, that Josh himself is an international fugitive on the run, that his family hates him and won't speak to him, and he's bringing up allegations that Josh has been molested as a child because his voice is so shaky. Already, straight away. Just straight away. Oh, and he's also brought up... You know, Josh saying that his dick doesn't work, that he doesn't master, well, that he doesn't have any sort of sexual feeling or something, something autistic that I don't even, not even I am versed in, right? But Ralph is versed in this, <laughs> you know, uh, chapter and verse, you know. Uh, so there we go. That that was this. That was the mere phraseology that Josh used. We need to sacrifice Ralph to the gods for for the corn harvest to grow. That is sent Ralph into such a rage. That he's acted and behaved this way, Josh. <laughs> I, I think that I think it's. I coming. couldn't hear it. What did I say? I don't know. Now we have he, to sacrifice him for the harvest. My predictions. I did. I did yeah. go all in predicting that Jim would bail out a new project too, which is Dick Masterson's Patreon alternative, and I was yeah. completely wrong. I guess. So he's not. He's going to hold me yeah. for that. He's going to say. That Josh you were wrong about new bad. project two in Medicare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you you were wrong about new project two in Medicare, right? You know, let's just sweep away everyone, everything that everyone's been correct about. The fact that Dick Masterson's harvesting your social security numbers, your personal data, you know. <laughs> you can't even cash out if you're Toad McKinley. You can't even get your 26 shekels if you're Mick Judas there. You can't even cash out. You know, the site is that broken. Let's just ignore the fact that Zoom has had, uh, whether he designed the back end or not, he's ha clearly had an involvement in the site, you know, in the site's construction. Let's just forget and ignore that. You know, let's just let's just sweep it away and say that Josh was wrong. 
Uh, He's been wrong about all right, everything. All right, all right, all right. Flat out. That. That's a long clip. Well, gosh, guys, um, I thought you were just kind of kidding around. Um, I can see that's not the case, though. You can hear him right now. You can hear him using his serious voice. He's not loud. He's not pretending to be funny or trying to be funny. He, this is now Dick Masterson in full boss mode, full employer with his employees mode. This is, this is him ordering his employees to mop a pile six, obey my orders, obey my, obey my instruction, or you will be swept off to your project two, or I will cut ties with you. Bang your heads together. I didn't realize it was this serious, but now I'm going to give you a disciplinary live on air, both of you. Because you, you bow to me, you underlings. Uh, well, I don't have anything against them. And what usually happens is that Ralph gets mad at me for something, and then I just kind of ignore it, and then he comes around, like, after a little while. Yeah. Ralph, do you think there's a chance of that happening? Do you, Ralph, do you think there's a chance of mediation so we can keep the new Project 2 scam going? So there's not going to be dissent in the ranks? I don't see it happening, Dick. No. I really don't. Uh... We need a we need a cooperative workplace environment. <laughs> you know, we want the office to be happy and cheerful as we're scamming the pay piggies. We don't want dissent. We don't want our employees turning against each other. Dick Masterson, you 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 need to uh, you need to keep these employees in line. Disciplinary. We'll see. You know, maybe if he apologizes for being treacherous and sharing DMs. But, uh, uh, what are we going to do to Matt, get you Matt, two in a relationship? Matt, 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 Matt. Josh, would, you, would you apologize for sh being treacherous for any... Look, what, Dick Masterson is demanding apologies from Josh. He's demanding mediation. He wants his employees to get along so that their business can flourish. Treachery that you've, that you've done... Well, I do feel bad for sharing DMs. It's not okay. something I usually well, do. I just I woke up out of my Space Station 13... Story. This high crime of sharing DMs? This high crime tantamount to treason? You know? Should, should we just, like, put Josh in the stocks and behead him? Should we just put Josh in the stocks and throw fruit at him? and Or hang him from the rafters and quarter his body? Like, like what, what, what do they expect? Like, it's DMs sent via the internet to people that they have not even, like, shared a physical space ever. You know, Josh and Dick Masterson and Ralph aren't, like, proper buddy-buddy friends. I know that Ralph went over to be in, uh, to <laughs> for a week in Dick Masterson's dream mansion and went on his show. But I'm pretty sure, right, I'm pretty sure that without the internet involved, that neither of these three people would speak properly, like, at all. You know, I, I doubt that any of them have even been checking on each other's personal, you know, goings-on, whether their families are okay during the coronavirus. I... I, I I highly doubt that these people are actually friends in the in the sense that we know friendship, you and I, dear viewer. These people are associates, business associates. They're colleagues. Colleagues. Super. And I yeah. saw my DMs and I'm like, that is silly. So I posted them because it was funny. Yeah. And I guess that was in a, a grave a grave mistake on my part. Well, you know goddamn well who you, how that usually goes. Sharing DM. <laughs> so even Masterson is giving the is giving the disciplinary here. He's giving Josh a dressing gown. You know goddamn well, Josh, how dear how sharing DMs goes. And you know why Dick Masterson is so forthright on the DM question? It's because, as he said prior in this, please don't share my DMs with you, Josh. He's coming down on the DM question simply and purely because he doesn't want his own DMs with Josh leaking out because they would prove collusion and cover up and orders to sweep, sweep, sweep. So, look, I mean, so that's a little admission. That's yeah. a, like if you had a cup of coffee and to do over, you probably wouldn't do it, right? Yeah, right. I mean, only because I just don't like to, to share DMs. You don't, like the you don't like the precedent. You don't like the precedent. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, because I, you can't speak privately if you're just worried about everybody sharing your DMs at all times. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I take it a little bit more serious because, you know, with writing and the shows and stuff, you know, I have to have some type of trust with people that I talk to. <laughs> Ralph, is, R Ralph is pretending that he's a trustworthy individual. Ralph is pretending that he's a journalist. That will keep his sources quiet and, and anonymous and secure? Ralph. Ethan Ralph, ladies and gentlemen. The, <laughs> oh. 
The man is a trustworthy, honorable samurai, and he will protect you. Or, if he fails in his duty, he will commit seppuku, rather than let you down, rather than breach the trust this is established when you contact him via private DMs. Uh, offline, anyway. Yeah. Or online, With me, <laughs> it's more like um, I need I need the users on my site to have kind of a sort of absolute confidence in me. Because if yeah. if they can't trust me to like handle their shit, then I'm I'm just fucked, right? I nobody will give me their credit card details to. What? This is what it comes to, even with Josh. Like, oh my god. Josh wants people's trust so that they will give him his cre him, him their credit card details. A person's trust is worth only as much, <laughs> you know, as as their credit card details. You know, once he's got them, the trust is the trust is fire. Who cares? Who gives a shit? Like this is this is the world we live in. There used to be a point on the internet and just in real life perhaps where people weren't this brazen about grubbing in the gutter, about collecting your data, about wanting money from you for nothing. But now we're at a point where Josh is openly saying that the price of your trust is your credit card details. And the only reason he's behaving in a way that's, that's probably morally correct, the only reason he's not leaking stuff, your IP addresses, or breaching your trust, is because he wants you to keep giving him your credit card details. So you can buy his merchandise. Josh from Kiwi Farms. I mean, I expect this from like Mundane Matt or Boogie or Sargon or even Ralph. But Josh, like, well, I mean, look, the extent of the extent of the the trust relationship between you, Pay Piggy, and Josh is the fact that he just wants your credit card details. Otherwise, he'd be behaving in a completely different way buy t-shirts and shit with if they don't trust me t-shirts yeah, i was i was more just amused about the whole thing until i saw that you shared the dms and then i was like what is you know this guy i didn't think that part was funny oh they're um, fine yeah. all right yeah. but and the thing is like ralph says these dms had 99.9 percent .9 that was said in them was stuff he'd already said publicly the one part he didn't want shared was the fact that he was bitching about kiwi farms and he wanted josh to run kiwi farms in the ethan ralph way that's why. That's the only part he didn't want leaked out, because that's the only part that was kept private prior to them being leaked. That's why he's so mad. That's why he's so butthurt. Yeah, the corn and stuff. I do think he kind of minimized. Because if you listen to the clip, you we did. Say, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not does... joking. Actually, I think this is what's going to happen. It does say you need so to be sacrificed. Come on the show and say, I was just <laughs> joking. But if you listen to the clip, you explicitly no. say Meh. I'm not joking. I mean, okay. there is I, a I, lot I, of I mindless Ralph hate the... on Kiwi Farms. Like there is a I lot of false flagging. So <clears throat> Tim Masterson keeps saying, you know, there's there's lots of false flagging on Kiwi Farms. There's lots of uh, mindless Ralph hate on Kiwi Farms. And what point? does he want to prove by bringing that up to Josh, the owner and proprietor of Kiwi Farms? Maybe Josh has got to clean it up. Maybe Josh has got to sweep it away, or else he won't get his 2,000 shekels. The whole definition of literal, when a sacrifice route and a coin <laughs> field to appease the gods. <laughs> you want to know took it? When I, when I heard it, I, I, I heard it as... Uh, basically, Dick should disown Ralph. All these people should disown Ralph, so we can just get back to being gay on Kiwi Farms together. I mean, that, that's how I read it. Like, like everybody needs to distance themselves from Ralph, just so I won't have problems on Kiwi Farms. Like, that's oh, how, no, that's how my, I read it. my point was that I just see, I just see a lot of, um, I see a lot of animosity. I think Ralph realizes the writings on the wall, and he realizes that his. <sighs> the side that he's on in the business associations that he has with Dick Masterson and, and, and maybe Josh, but certainly other people, it's a negative relationship. It's a, it's, a, it's a relationship where once it was beneficial, where once, you know, let's say Josh could go on the kill stream and get promotion for Mad at the Internet, um, Masterson could use uh, Ethan Ralph as a, as a point to like sort out petty drama between him and Maddox and stuff like that. Now it's becoming a point of contention where Ethan Ralph is harming Josh and Dick Masterson. His relationship with them is purely negative. It's not beneficial anymore. It's not mutually beneficial. So Ralph realizes, he recognizes the writings on the wall, that he has become a liability, an open, blatant, drunken liability. 
And so he desperately is trying and flailing and uh, scrabbling around for approval and validation because he doesn't want to be cut loose. He recognises he's going to have to be cut loose like a cancer. He's going to have to be cut out and excised. But he doesn't want that to happen. So that's why he's going crazy at mere slights. Because he recognises the writing's on the wall. His cards are on the table. He's been served his chips. And he's become yesterday's man, ladies and gentlemen. Ethan Ralph is yesterday's man. And he will be the first to fall. He will be the first to be sacrificed. They're growing disproportionately to positivity in regards to the show. We didn't play the whole clip, but it sounded to me he was being sarcastic. I don't think A little he... bit. Yeah, even Sean the Sheep recognizes that Josh wasn't being sincere when he said sacrifice Ralph to the, the corn guards for, for the rain to fall. Even Sean the Sheep recognizes this. He really wants to sacrifice you in any way. Well, I know he didn't want to kill you. I know me, he doesn't want to kill you, but, like I... that. <laughs> but even so, so funny, I, right? I don't think he wants to destroy <laughs> you either, you know? You know? Well, I didn't think he was even saying that he wanted to destroy me. I think what he was he saying is, oh, you know, Ralph's kind of an albatross. You know what I mean? That's kind of hot to See, get. even Ralph recognizes that he himself is an albatross around their necks. <laughs> you know, he's got to go at some point. He's got to go. His time is over. He's yesterday's man. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it was the DMs that kind of pissed me off. And that know, I think is fair, and I, I hope Josh will uh, Let's just find a way things... to make it right. Okay, you know, he shouldn't be leaving wait, 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 back up, back up. So Josh is going to make it right? Josh is going to make it right? So none of them are going to hold Ralph accountable for, for smearing Josh as a pedophile, for bringing up all of this crazy accusations, all of these this crazy line of just 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 stuff that you wouldn't say to someone if you if you wanted to call them friend or anything like that this is stuff you'd say to your sworn enemy but none of them are going to hold ralph accountable for that you know the highest crime here that's been perpetrated is the fact that josh leaked some dms that were 99.9 percent .9 already said by ethan ralph himself but he didn't want the the fact that he was bitching about kiwi farms to be out in the open you know so that's that's the highest crime here you know, and these people, I assume, Josh thinks that Dick Masterson's his friend. I think he said that. <laughs> you know, but even his friend, his hero, his idol, Dick Masterson, won't rake Ralph over the coals for calling him, a, you know, calling Josh a pedo and saying that he was molested as a child. All of this crazy stuff, you know. Uh, but the highest crime, don't forget, samurai, neat samurai, is leaking them DMs. Yeah, but I appreciate all the good feelings, and I like the positivity going on here. But um, Ralph kind of called me a child pornographer, child molester. See, and even Josh recognizes, even Josh recognizes the hypocrisy here. You know, so I mean, even he's batting. I mean, he's the only one at this point batting for himself. You know, press one if you think that leaking DMs is worse than calling someone a child molester. Or press two if you think that calling someone a child molester is worse than leaking DMs. So many twos. So many twos. The neat samurai who watch the Goldwoodson channel have morals. They have retained their humanity and their souls. Child molested, like, three uh, You know what, <laughs> you said a lot game. of things about my family and all that, too. You know. That's all inbounds. Well, I never accused you of being a child molester. I mean, you I can make whatever other you... people... Okay, actually, Didn't you say his whole family drunk themselves into a grave? They said that you had yeah. spread pedo. Yeah, they That's you had spread so bad. child pornography. I don't know. Ralph, would you... Have... Yeah, but... Uh, so, so the, the gaslighting at play here. Josh said that Ralph's family drank themselves into a grave because immediately prior to that... Ralph said that Josh's family don't speak to him because he's an international fugitive and he's a he's a he's a pedophile. You know, Th this wasn't unprovoked from Josh, but this is like a crazy ganging up on Josh. This is Josh being put in his place and dressed down, and given a verbal sort of purse. This is Josh having the Jesse treatment now, from Dick Masterson, Sean the Sheep, and Ethan Ralph. I apologize for his, for the implication of me. If he gives a real apology, then I will give a real apology as well. That's not how apologies work. You can't. Now you're being a woman. You can't hold it hostage. No, you have to give it from your heart. You have to. Well, from your... as far as I know, I don't know of him molesting any children, so I will apologize for 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 bringing up bringing that up. Matt, Matt, Matt. That's funny. It's funny, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? What a funny, humorous podcast this is. Uh, 
by the professional comedian. Based in Los Angeles, living in the Hollywood Hills, the prom queen. Not a simp at all who tries to have sex with a 35-year-old barren woman. No, this is, this is the height of comedy. You know, we need to laugh over apologies. You know, we need to laugh over sincere drama between these two people. You know, it's all funny. It's all hilarious. You know, we're all outside the bubble. When in actual fact, the comedian in, in charge of all of this is in real time screenshotting <laughs> posts on Kiwi Farms and raging about them on Twitter, having a literal midlife crisis before our eyes, dissolving into Chris Chan before our eyes. You know, but he's out of it. He's above all this. He's above all this. Dick Masterson, the Mexican Jew. Is the worst. <laughs> no, no, no. Matt! However, Matt, Matt, very good. All right, Matt, boys. That's an apology. Matt, right? no, honestly, I, I have not heard children. Is that what you want me to say? I mean, I don't know. Like, uh, I will admit I do not know the names of the children. <laughs> <laughs> and that is... I, I, you notice how everyone's laughing except for Josh. You know, the actual person that's being accused of being a pedo. That they're all laughing, you know. This is such a non-issue, right? You know, let's laugh and let's laugh and broadcast this to the millions of people that apparently download this podcast every day. You know, let's just laugh that accusation away. Notice how Josh isn't laughing. Notice how Josh is just stunned into silence by, you know, his friend snaking on him, gaslighting him is the operative word here. Gaslighting. As much as I am willing to say, you know, we were all gonna we were all gonna be hanging out and partying if it wasn't for this goddamn virus. Yeah. All three of us, jo oh, no. Mel's oh, coming dude. in. We were all gonna have a good time together. Right, not not a hell of a corn. Yeah, boss Dick Masterson, keeping his employees in line. We're all gonna have a good time. We're gonna be forced to have a good time. You will come to the work Christmas party. You will get along. You will do this, or one of you will be dropped. One of you won't get paid. Leak out. We're all gonna harvest corn together <laughs> and pal around, and now we're accusing yeah. each other of being child molesters. And our Noel like... and I have had a crazy. I remember being in Knoxville and talking to Noel oh. for about an hour and a half and trying to get Streamy to let him keep, you know, keep him on the air. And... So this is another favor that Ralph is bringing up. You came to me on the day of my daughter's wedding day, and you asked me for a favor. This is Ethan Ralph. Ethan Ralph literally doing a Godfather routine with Josh. I did you a favor, Josh, keeping you on stream me, trying to get you on to stream me. <laughs> you know? So you owe me everything, Josh. You absolutely owe me absolutely everything. You will delete that Kiwi Farms thread, Josh. You will do this. You will bow to the gunt. There's been so much uh, shit going. That seems like a million years ago. But that was just a year and a half ago. Um, uh, again, Ralph has transcended time so much that a year and a half, 18 months of time, in his own mind, seems like millions and millions of years. He's transcended time. His alcoholism and his frequent hard drug abuse has caused him to just transcend the boundaries of time that constrain us all mere mortals. Ethan Ralph, 18 months is a million years. Oh uh, Yeah, I don't know, man. It's been crazy. Well, I'm willing to. I'm willing to let it go. I, I okay. was just. Ralph recognizes that what this is now. This isn't. <laughs> Ralph recognizes now the reason why Dick Matterson wanted him and Josh on the show. It wasn't for an IBS fight. It wasn't for an all all you know uh, balls to the wall, you know shit flinging contest. It wasn't for that at all. It was for mediation. It was so you can all get along to continue the scam. And Ralph has finally recognized this. 19.8, uh, 19 minutes, 8 seconds in, Ralph has finally realized the reason why he's there. And so therefore, he's recognizing that he has to bow to Dick Masterson's demands to apologize and get along with Josh, get along with his colleague. Mostly miffed about the DMs. Uh, I would be miffed about that too. I will never share your guys' DMs, I promise. <laughs> Dick Masterson is miffed about the DMs because he doesn't want his own DMs to be shared with Josh and other colluders. <laughs> you know, because it would prove collusion. It would prove orders to sweep and clean it up. So that's why Dick Masterson has jumped on the DM angle so, so hard. Especially since, I mean, look, you've been on the show so many times. I don't know. It just felt a little like, you know, I know you say we don't have any ties. No, we don't have official ties, but it just felt like, wow. A little betrayal. You know, not gay yeah, it's yeah. like, all right. Uh, that was my issue. All right, Ralph. What is what is there anything making you? And that's it. That's the what end of that's the end of the clip. Nineteen minutes thirty seconds. Josh versus Ethan Ralph. The mediation. 
Dick Masterson, the boss, sorting out his employees, sorting out his new project to capos so that they stay in line. Take care, ladies and gentlemen, take care.